welcome to another Bob Point Plays, and this is something a little bit different. I'm just experimenting here with uh, my new fangled, um, what are these called? Tripods, there you go, tripod. Um, I do apologise for how unprofessional these videos are, but I do promise to get better at them. So, uh, this is a first for Bob Point Plays, this is Bob Point opens um and this is a package that i re received a while ago i do know what's in it but um i thought i know what i'll do i'll uh, use this opportunity uh to do an unboxing which uh we see on uh, quite a few youtube channels you see it's quite a hefty box there's my hand for scale so what's in the box trusty blade Always cut away from yourself, folks. You're dangerous in the wrong hands. Very exciting. Although I do know what's in here. Oh, might be a little clue there. Can you see? A little tease for you. A bit more, a bit more, and a bit more. Oh, yes. Anybody who knows their onions will know what this is. Here we go. Look at that, folks. A box full of uh, Watsits. Polystyrene Watsits. Just what I always wanted. Good. So I hope you enjoyed that unboxing. Just kidding, of course. The main star of the show is this Star Saga. In fact, this. Star Saga. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Okay, so uh, this is the um, space version of Dungeon Saga, which uh, you will have seen was in my first video playing uh, with my uh, daughter, and I've since played down at the Stoke Club, uh, which is an excellent game. Uh, this Star Saga game uh, is set in the Mantic Warpath universe. Um, and I think could probably be considered as the entry point into the Warpath universe from the various um, Mantic games that uh, they produce. So this, you've got Dreadball, you've got Dead Zone, you have Warpath, Warpath Firefight, excuse me, and also um, Warpath, which is the, the, uh, the big scale game, if you like, the army scale game. So I'm very excited to play this. I did have this demo to me by the lovely uh, Alex at uh, the UK Games Expo. Um, I picked this up off uh, Troll Trader, I believe, online for uh, a decent sum. On the front here, we can see uh, the various characters that you get in the game. I only know two of them. This is Wrath here, and here we have um, the Devil Salvaggio, I think his name is. This lady here is, uh, I think she's the captain type figure. Uh, not quite sure what her name is. And then we've got the Forge Father Stroke Brocker. Um, again, not quite sure what his name is, but uh, they seem to be surrounded on all sides by uh, evil doers. Let's have a look at the back, and there's the contents. So, countless stars, endless adventure. The galactic co-prosperity sphere is the most technologically advanced civilization in the history of mankind. When a powerful corporation starts stealing secrets, a team of the galaxy's deadliest mercenaries is hired to retrieve them. Their target, a network of laboratories hidden deep beneath the surface of the planet Eras, the reward is high, but so is the risk. If the elite guards weren't enough, our heroes will also have to deal with the monstrous creation of Eris's twisted master. Welcome to Star Saga. Excellent. Well, that does look good. This fella here looks especially good. Uh, I think he's a plague aberration, which will go with my uh, recently acquired plague forces, uh, having picked up uh, an old copy of uh, Dead Zone First Edition. Uh, at the weekend at uh, the Peter Pig Square Pashing Day that uh, I took part in. Some lovely bits of plastic scenery, very similar 
in uh, in style, I suppose, to the Dungeon Saga on the uh, suitable for a spaceship or a, a, an underground lab on uh, a planet somewhere. Uh, this here, I really like this figure. I think this is called the something mystic, isn't it? Somebody, no doubt, will correct me on that, but uh, a very weird and wonderful creature. I think it might be part of the Nameless faction. And then there's some other bits. There is an interesting story behind my purchase of this because, excuse me, moving away. Um, I was really interested in buying it, and in haste, I bid on an item on eBay, which I thought was this, but was in actual fact this, which would account for why I got it for seven or eight pounds. And this is actually the Corporation Minion Booster for Star Saga. Now, whether I actually need this for Star Saga or not, I have no idea. But um, certainly for games of Dead Zone, uh, should I wish to play the Maison Lab faction, which is the uh, one of the two new factions coming up for uh, Dead Zone Outbreak, the new supplement, and to be used in the campaign, that that should be good. Um, yeah, there's a picture of the figures on here, but I'm not entirely sure what they are. But uh, yeah, they look they look pretty cool. I think these two guys here are lab technicians. Uh, this guy's clearly been infected with the plague, and then these look like some sort of security troopers around the outside. But yeah, that will be uh, that will come in useful. So, without further ado. Unfortunately, uh, unlike Throat Saw, I won't be adding uh, in some lovely lightsaber effect or whatever it is. But uh, we go for those. So there we go. This would be great, wouldn't it, to have um, the noise of a, a starship door opening. Like that. There we go. And uh, the first impression. Oh, smell that. Can you smell that? The smell of new game, new box game being opened, that is fantastic, that smells lovely. Uh, and the first impressions are, it is chock full of stuff. I'm not sure they could have fitted much more in here. So let's uh, get these plastic bits out of the way, because these are all the figures. Pop that to one side for a moment. So, what are these? These look like, yeah, these look like probably um, plaguey types. Yeah, they may be infected with plague. Certainly, this guy, I think he's similar to the one that comes in the booster. In fact, these probably all are repeated in the booster, I should imagine. I am an expert at using knives, by the way, um, so uh, the, the speed with which I open these is, uh, I know it must look quite impressive on screen, but please be careful. I'm joking, of course. Okay, so there's lots of these, these guys in red. I think the, the guys in red are the bad guys, and the guys in blue are the good guys, although that does depend on which side of the fence you sit. That's a lovely figure, isn't it? It's like that. It's got his uh, hand up to the com link. Uh, looking very good. I really need to improve the lighting in uh, Bob Point Play Studios. No, that's not great, is it? Let's just see if that's Just creating shadow to be honest, but they're quite nice, aren't they? I do like the fact that these are one piece. Mantic seem to do this for most of their board guy board game type games. Uh yeah. 
uh, so it's it's easy. Uh, it's an easy introduction into uh, into gaming, and these are eminently suitable to be used in games of Dead Zone, and of course uh, Warpath. In fact, just about any game that you would so wish to play. Um, they really are nice, aren't they? For one piece castings. I don't think you can get too snitty about these things. People, some people I know like to customise. But, so how many figures are there? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 red guys. Look at that. 24. It's a good handful of figures, that is. A real good handful. Because they are the bad guys, and uh, the good guys are really interesting because I know that um, a couple of these are going to be able to be used in my Reb Dead Zone faction. Crikey. All right, so this here is, I think, he is the Devil Savaggio. Now I know I've seen Andrew Sharp. From Way to Fire using this guy in his rebel force that he used um, in the Dead Zone Outbreak battle report that they've just posted up. Uh, I'm not sure he did very, very good. He's armed with a flamer. Um, uh, and certainly the half of the battle report that I've seen, I haven't quite seen all of it yet. Um, uh, he didn't do particularly well, but he is a very nice figure. And in the online battle reports that I've seen or or uh, game reports that I've seen of Star Saga, the devil uh, certainly um, does lots of good work. This is Wrath. Now, in the um, demo game that I had with Alex, uh, this guy cut through lots and lots of uh, corporation guys. This is the... Uh, sorry. Uh, this is the... Um, Forge Father character he looks like he's some sort of tech guy with the uh, mechanical arm uh, attachment on his back. No idea who this is, but I thought that was a spanner he's holding. I don't think it is, but that seems okay. Now this is the lady character. Now she will do excellent as a. Uh, Reb leader. She is lovely. I really like her. I'm not quite sure what her name is again. I don't know if it's actually on the box. Let's have a look. There we go. Erica Delinsky. And there's her card. Top of the shop. Right, let's crack these open. And I should be able to see what's what. There's Wrath, that's the aberration. Francisco the Devil Salvaggio. He sounds like one mean mother. Okay, um, this is uh, the cutesy robot called CURB07153 or Kirby for short. I don't think anybody will be calling him CURB07153 in the game. There he is. We have Ogun Helker, the dwarf shooting tank, or Forge Father, I'm sure that should be. Um, okay, this guy then is Elise, a Kaowin. Kaowin, I've never heard of Kaowin. That must be a new race that's uh, been introduced into the game. Into the Warpath universe. There we go. Excellent. And then also in here, there's um, what look like heavy machine guns or auto guns or whatever the uh, 
science fiction denomination is. Nomenclature. They look good. They're in blue, so I'm wondering if they are for these hired mercenaries to assault the, uh, the space station. So in here we have, what do we have? We certainly have. This thing, which is down as the Organic Data Storage Unit X02A Alpha. But I'm sure this is a Kovar Mystic. Sure of it. But that's great, isn't it? Look at all the tentacles. It's, part, it's got to be part of the Nameless Faction, hasn't it? Got to be. Uh, who's this? Well, I know who this is. This here is... Dr. Octopus. No, sorry, not Dr. Octopus. Dr. Lucas Coina. Um, what a lovely figure that is as well with the uh, tentacles. It is slightly softer plastic, this is, uh, as you can see, um, than uh, you would get in uh, the normal plastic kits that you get from Mantic. But it is... Um, it will take paint well. I know that very well from uh, painting the Mars Attacks figures. No problem there. This is uh, Guard Commander Graves. I'm sure he needs painting a red coat because I'm fairly sure he won't last very long in the game. And finally, must be a card for this. Yes. Oh, we have an Enforcer. He's in blue. But I don't know if that means he's a good guy or not. Because his card is red. Anyway, we'll find out more about that, I'm sure. But this is Enforcer E5435, codename Monarch. They're catchy names, aren't they? Enforcer E. That might be ES, actually. 435, codename Monarch. So, uh, henceforth known as Monarch. And then there's, I'm not quite sure what this is, a little little bit but I'll make sure not to lose that keep that nice and safe so we'll put those away these cards are really nice quality um, not the thickest but nice and glossy with some nice artwork on the rear there I'm guessing these are character cards um, for the main characters and all the other uh, more generic troops, I guess we'll uh, won't have one. Now this guy is gorgeous. Look at him. He is. Uh, I know he's a plague aberration. He's some sort of a ape-like stance or simian stance. But I have painted Plague previously, um, and the detail on those figures is lovely. So, this is one that uh, I picked up uh, from the ever obliging Simon Clark at the weekend at the Square Bashing Day. Beautifully painted, but the detail on these. Plague model, model, models is just gorgeous, so uh, he will be painted in a very similar style to him. It's the it's the sort of Mantic uh, studio scheme, I would guess you would call that. There you go. Lovely. Great. Okay. Anyway, so, what else is there in the box? Down so here, we've got all the... Um, sci-fi bits and pieces, nice little table there for the cafeteria, not quite sure what that is, looks like a set of drawers with maybe a screen on it, not sure, all looking suitably sci-fi and of course not just usable in Star Saga, there's a weapons rack, a couple of weapons racks, 
some sort of cabinet with stores or supplies and maybe medical supplies, I don't know. And a nice little table. And it's like a more official table, maybe a touch screen sort of data input thing. Don't know what that is. Looks nice. Yeah, lots of um, some of this stuff is a little bit bent, as you can see, maybe there. That should be more in that position, I suppose, that position. Um, just some hot water um, for a few seconds, then into some cold water. We'll straighten that out, no problem. Okay, so wall looks very, very cool and great. Okay, yeah, some uh, ammo type crates, always useful. Yeah, so they look suitably great and cool. Let's pop them back into the box. So we've also got some cards. These are skills. I won't open that up just yet, but the top one says, Frag Grenade 6. Discard this card as an action to make a ranged attack short with three dice. Ignores cover and darkness. It can target a point on the board and affects the target square and all the adjacent squares. And then another deck of cards called the Nexus deck. I guess this is for the bad guys. Again, I won't open this, but uh, the top one says planning. Look at the top five cards of the Nexus deck and play. Okay. And here we have some very nice dice. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, some nice dice in there. And hopefully underneath here will be the rest of the bits. Yeah. So. What's this? Front doors. Again, very simple. Very similar in style to the doors that you get through the Dead Zone, uh, sorry, through the Dungeon Saga Kickstarter. I'll get those painted up in the appropriate official codex colours. So we have the Iris or Iris. Iris? Iris? Contract Mission Book. Um, I imagine if you were in the Kickstarter, you got this plus probably all the expansions that came with it. So no doubt there are other mission books to come to retail. I, I, uh, I didn't jump in on the Kickstarter. But this will keep myself and my group of... Nerd but buddies uh, going for long enough, I'm sure. Looks like there's probably a couple of beginner missions there. And then a narrative sort of campaign set of missions going through. How many? Six, seven, eight, nine missions. So we've got missions A, B and C. I'm thinking of probably beginner type missions and then uh, the narrative campaign excellent so the this is Blaine here is a well known character in uh, mantic circles if you like uh, it looks uh, very good so what does this say uh, here to the quick reader over the length of years and divergent dimensions of his life Blaine has carried many titles and won many battles. To most of the GCPS, though, he is a master criminal with a litany of charges standing against him. His origins and motivations are a mystery to all, but there is one thing that everyone from the Council of Seven to the lowliest fat totem knows about Blaine. He gets things done. Contact was made in an unusually direct manner. Aboard his starship, the Conqueror, a vessel capable of travelling through not only space but temporal and dimensional barriers, Blaine's latest plotting was interrupted by an incoming transmission on a low-energy but highly targeted frequency. The very fact that someone 
Anyone could even find him, let alone have the nerve to beam a message straight to him, was intriguing enough to warrant Blaine's attention. A conversation began and a deal was proposed. Valuable research had been stolen and damages incurred. What had been taken had to be retrieved and the guilty party punished. The client? A low-profile medical outfit on the verge of an antiviral breakthrough. A minnow in the corporate ocean with no teeth of its own, but one with the money to at least hire some. The target? None other than Maison Labs, one of the big players in the GCPS. A bully who had seen the chance to take someone else's work for their own and gain and now stood in the need of a black eye. The client wanted their research files returned intact and any copies deleted from a laboratory hidden on Iris. 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 Violence would almost certainly ensue, but to access the, access the site and get past the first levels of security unhindered, the client would supply a Maison Lab shuttle and verify credentials. Acquiring these had not been easy. Blaine was told, but the client had an ace up its sleeve, an insider, Amelia Bett, a Maison employee, who had been bought promised enough credits, credits to betray her bosses, but on one condition. She would be extracted too. A likely story, I think. Only the price remained. 300 million credits was the initial offer, plus all the tech Blaine could loot from the site. Eventually, he would settle for 400 mil and the tech. All he needed now was a team. Firepower would be necessary, obviously, and some brains. Technical ability too, and a backup plan. A contingency for the unexpected. Because if there was one thing Blaine knew about the GCPS, it was that things were never quite as simple as they seemed. His mind made up, Blaine began to make some calls. Intriguing, eh? Oh. So yeah, that's not... Oh, here we go, the personnel of the team. We've got Captain Erika Delinsky. Kirby... Francesco the Devil Salvaggio, Wrath, Organ, sorry, Ogan Helker, and Elise. Yeah, she's good. That one's intriguing, isn't it? It's a, it's a race I've not heard of before, so. Very good, very good. Uh, and a rule book. All the uh, details of what you get. There's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? With all the usual counters and gubbins and. Terminals and cabinets and doors and things. Excellent. All the movements beautifully drawn, isn't it? Well presented. A soft cover, but uh, very serviceable. I, th I do find the artwork is getting better and better with every release that Mantic come out with. That's nice, isn't it? As so you're looking on a, some sort of security cam at, uh, at the team, you can see Wrath and. Salvaggio there. That's a nice shot of Erika Delinsky. There's the team all together. Not sure mine will be painted quite that well. But yeah, I wonder if that is the girl who's betrayed Maison Labs. Where was she? Where was she? Come on. Where? There. I wonder if that is the girl that's betrayed Maison Labs. Need to get her out. So, um, tokens, nice, good card stock, and then the boards themselves. So these just pop out, a bit like the Dungeon Saga tiles, just a butt to one another to make pleasing patterns. And you can just very subtly they have put the... Um, the squares for movement on there. That's really well done. Oh, it's fantastic and double sided, so multiple use. Excellent, excellent. So there's what three three full cards there and then on here where there's some extra tokens we've got one or two extra pieces. I do know, I think, and uh throat saw correct me on this, I think it's dark ops that produce uh, an MDF version of this, um, which if you go to Throat Saw's uh, channel, you'll see him painting up in a very stunning, um, I think it's a white and orange scheme. 
that's certainly something for me to consider uh, in the future. I'll pop those all in the back. Pop those in there. I don't know if you're like me, but every time I open one of these things, I actually struggle to fit the contents back in. It's clearly been very professionally packed by the staff at Mantic. There we go. Oh, these look like some uh, clips for maybe attaching onto the uh, the character cards to denote some status, I would imagine. I'll pop them back in, I'll lose them otherwise. There we go, so that is Star Saga. Really looking forward to that. Can't wait to um, give it a go. Just while you are on, I'll show you my burgeoning Dead Zone scene. Caught some of this second hand off the uh, Facebook group. group. So there's a big piece here which is glued together, which isn't ideal particularly. Um, but it will come in handy. It does have this rather nice sort of balcony area here, which I do like, I do like. But whether that'll be on every table, I don't know. Uh, there's a nice big, sorry, nice big, there's a, a man just uh, from Green Thumb, just spraying my lawn. That's rather nice, isn't it? He does charge, of course. Um, so there's those bits which I'm very fond of this stuff is lovely to put together it's great being creative and designing the different um, layouts I did build this the other day but just look at the size of it it's the landing pad now this features in uh, one of the scenarios uh, within the um, summer campaign, but it takes up one, two, three, four. One, two, yeah, it takes up sixteen squares there. Of uh, see, I would like, I do like the idea of having it elevated, maybe on maybe that's something like that. take these legs off maybe use them for something else but uh, it would allow more utility of things underneath and then on top too so uh, I think that will be the way to go uh, with that so one more bit before I finish um, rather than doing a separate video so I'll just show you uh, my dread ball just managed to pick up the uh, what are they the uh, second edition box set these are come here the human faction I think they're called the Trantec 29ers that's not very good Trontec 29ers uh, in official parlance but mine are painted up with this rather fetching red outfit with a white stripe running down front and back and these are the Mantic Core Strike Kings Mantic Core Strike Kings so a little bit of a play on words there folks uh, these came in the original box set so there are actually 10 10 of them uh, along with the Marauder Orcs faction painted in yellow and a yellow and purple scheme and these are the Thrakadaka Smashers really enjoy playing with these but um, not particularly good at holding the ball so I don't know what happens in Second edition, I'm told that all the um, teams have had some sort of rebalancing. This is Gloria, the ref bot. She literally has eyes in the back of her head. 
Very good. Uh, third of the season one teams is the Mech Tech Giants. So, the Forge Father team painted in lovely green and gold, Aztec y themed, I guess. So, Mech Tech Giants. Giants, of course, uh, because they're dwarfs, obviously. And then a team I've never actually used, but these are the Veermin team um, in in black and pink because why not? I haven't actually got a name for these yet, um, but in the in the short-lived league that we held at the uh, Stoke Club. I'm wondering if there's. I oh know who that is. I thought I was missing one of the players. Uh, I did actually play against these guys, nimble and strong. Now my team were these. Um, I'm fairly sure I did name them, but I can't remember what they are. It's the Asterian team. These are very quick um, and cheaty. Folks, I think. There we go, that's better. These are uh, my hysterians who uh, like to throw themselves onto the floor as if they've been shot by a sniper. This is better, there we go. Better shot of uh, one of the orcs, and similarly one of the Manticore Strike King. It's very easy to paint up these, really. Um, and then uh, one other team, which will get a repaint. These I'm not particularly happy at all with. These. Uh, this is the Nameless, which is good timing because. They're about to be released in Dead Zone as a faction. So yeah, it's not my best paint work on these guys, but the striker type. I know that in first edition these had a bit of a reputation for being broken. Um, because they had sticky guards which Although I can't quite remember what that meant. It, it did mean that uh, they had somewhat of an advantage over most others. That's the Nameless. This is uh, one of the star players. can't remember what his name is, but it looks quite nice. And the Goblin star player with a rather cheeky uh, moustache. There we go. So, yeah, that's... Um, uh, oh, my, my dreadful teams. Hopefully, uh, we'll get them on the table soon. Okay, uh, that's it for me now, for now. Um, rambled on a bit longer than I thought with just the unboxing, um, and then a little bit of my dead zone scenery, and then my dreadful team. It's all very mantic centric, isn't it? Uh, that that uh, won't always be the case on this channel, but now I'm going to say goodbye. Take care. Look after each other. Be careful. Bye-bye.